Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Just thought you might want to know, Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for a box of Modern Horizons. From May 13th until June 16th, if you place an order of $10 or more, you'll be entered to win. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Well hello there, I didn't see you come in. Why don't you have a seat and enjoy this wonderful EDH game that's coming your way. This week, I'm playing Krenko, and I keep two snow covered mountains, Goblin Welder, Cheering Fanatic, Goblin Bombardment, Skirk Prospector, and Rube Medallion. Adam is taking out his Akiri and Timna deck again, keeping an Arid Mesa, a Godless Shrine, a Swamp, a Mountain, a Smothering Tithe, a Mirage Mirror, and a Damnation. Peter is playing his Yeva deck, keeping Eldritch Evolution, Manglehorn, Scavenging Ooze, Lignify, Worldly Tutor, and Two Forests. Last but not least, Scott is borrowing Peter's Yuriko deck, and he keeps Submerge, Two Islands, Thassa, Cabal Coffers, a Swamp, and a Miss Herald. Peter wins the die roll and starts us off. Peter draws and, believing in the heart of the cards, drops a turn one Soul Ring. I play a Snow-Covered Mountain and I cast Goblin Welder. Adam plays an Arid Mesa, passing turn. Scott plays an Island and casts a Miss Herald. At the end of Scott's turn, Adam takes one to crack the Mesa and goes to find a land. Peter plays a forest and passes. I draw, play a snow-covered mountain, and I cast Ruby Medallion. I forget that Yeva has flash as I swing my welder at Peter, and he brings in his commander to block with her. I then pass to Adam. Adam plays a mountain and brings out a Kiri. Scott plays a swamp and swings the herald at me. With nothing to block with, Scott is easily able to use Commander Jitsu to bring out Yuriko. I take one from Yuriko, and Scott reveals part the Water Veil. This deals 6 damage to all of his opponents, and that's 19 damage on turn 2 in one swing, which isn't too shabby. Scott then discards down to 7 and passes to Peter. Peter plays a Forest and uses Lignify to try and deal with Yuriko. Responding to the spell on the stack, Scott casts Submerge for free and bounces Yuriko to the top of his library but instead puts it to his command zone. Peter then drops a Manglehorn, blowing up my Ruby Medallion, and passes. I draw and play a Snow-Covered Mountain. I then cast a Prismatic Lens, and use my last Mountain to cast a Skirk Prospector before passing to Adam. Adam plays a Godless Shrine and takes two to have it come in untapped. He then taps out to cast a Mirage Mirror, which comes in tapped. We then hop to the combat step, and Akiri slings her way into Scott's face for one. Scott plays another island for turn, and recasts the Miss Cloaked Herald before passing to Peter. Peter casts a Groin Rites of Itlamok, and reveals a Fierce Empath from the four. He then passes to me. I've got no land for turn, and I cast a Cheering Fanatic in my main phase. I'm way further behind than I'd like at this point, but I do cast Goblin Bombardment anyway before passing to Adam. Adam plays another Mountain for turn, and pays 4 in his main phase for a Smothering Tithe. Moving to combat, Akiri finds her way once more and deals 1 to Scott. Scott doesn't pay for the Tithe trigger, and Adam gains a treasure. Scott then drops a Swamp for turn, and swings the Herald at me once more. I can't block it, and Scott activates Commander Jitsu again to bring out Yuriko. I take another point of commander damage, and Yuriko's ability triggers, revealing Spelltwine. That's another 19 damage on his turn, and in his second main phase, Scott recasts the Herald. Moving to the end step, Peter uses Worldly Tutor in his hand to find and place Yison on top of his library. Peter draws, Adam gains a treasure, and this feels a lot like Deja Vu. Peter then drops his Fierce Empath, and goes to find a Woodland Bellower, putting it to hand. Adam realizes his treasure should be tapped, correcting himself, and Peter then moves to cast a Scavenging Ooze. 
Before leaving Peter's second main phase, I used my Goblin Bombardment, sacrificing my Prospector to kill Peter's Fierce Empath and thus deny him the rights flip. I draw, and I let Adam gain another tapped treasure. My turn is quite quick, as I cast Quenko and I pass to Adam. Adam plays a Swamp and goes to combat. With the treasures also pumping Akiri now, he swings her once more at Scott, who takes the hit for 4. Adam's second main phase has what I feared the most, and a damnation wipes away all the creatures from the board. Scott draws, and Adam gains his treasure. We then see an island from Scott, followed by a solemn simulacrum, which goes to find him a swamp. Peter casts a woodland bellower, and Adam remembers to gain his treasure token. Peter goes and grabs a runic armosaur, putting it to the field, and passes to me. I draw, and Adam gains his treasure. I play a Spine Rock Knoll as my land for turn, hiding away a card before casting Shared Animosity on an empty boar like a champ. Adam plays a Mountain and brings out Timnan as main phase. He then activates his Mirage Mirror to become a copy of the Woodland Bellower, and he swings it at Scott. Scott takes the hit for 6, and in Adam's second main phase, he loses 1 life to draw a card from Timna's ability. Moving to his second main phase, Adam uses some treasures to cast Lightning Greaves, and then the rest to recast Akiri. He moves the Greaves onto her before passing turn. Scott plays an island as Adam gains his treasure back. We then see Thassa hitting the field, and the idea of giving Yurko unblockable is making me uncomfortable with my low life total. He makes the Solemn Simulacrum unblockable, swinging it at Adam. Scott then activates Commander Jitsu, and has Yurko hit Adam for 1. This lets him reveal Arcane Adaptation, and he deals 3 to his opponents. Peter draws, and Adam gains his treasure. We see a Makokoro center of the sea as Peter's land return, followed by the Yisen he'd drawn earlier. I draw, Adam gains a treasure, and I pass turn. Adam activates his mirror in his main phase again to become a copy of Yuriko, and then drops a Bloodforged Battle Axe and equips it onto Yuriko. Moving to combat, Akiri heads to Scott, while Yuriko heads at me. Scott takes 4 again, while I take 3. Adam then has some triggers to resolve, gaining a token copy of the Battle Axe, and resolving his Yuriko trigger, revealing a Plains. He then pays 2 life to Timna's ability, losing 2 life and drawing 2 more cards. Moving to his end step, the Battle Axe falls off the Yuriko mirror, as it once more just becomes a Mirage mirror. Scott plays a Buried Ruin, and Adam gains his treasure token. Scott then makes Yuriko unblockable, and swings her at Adam. Adam takes the 1, and Yuriko's ability reveals Mystical Tutor off the top. Scott's opponents lose 1, and I move to his second main phase. We then see Part the Water Veil, giving Scott an extra turn, and Scott then passes to himself. Scott draws, and Adam gains his treasure. He plays a Swamp, and casts a Mystical Tutor in his main phase. Scott finds and puts Temporal Trespass on top of his library, representing 11 damage to each of us if Yuriko connects. He swings Yuriko at me, and I take the 1. Yuriko's trigger then goes on the stack, and Peter responds to it by activating Makokoro. This has everyone draw a card, and saves us from 11 damage from the Trespass, while gaining Adam some treasures. In his second main phase, Scott delves away his graveyard to help cast Temporal Trespass, and passes to his next extra turn. Scott draws, Adam gains a treasure, and then Scott plays an island for his turn. He swings Yuriko at me again for 1, and this time reveals a creeping tar pit off the top. He pays 4 in a second main phase to recast the Solemn Simulacrum, and goes to find a basic. Scott then casts a Moth Dust Changeling. He then casts an Arcane Adaptation, and Adam's suggestion to name humans falls on deaf ears as Scott chooses ninjas. Peter draws, and Adam gains a treasure. We then see Peter tap 7 mana, and Adam is pleased to gain 4 more treasure tokens, as Regal Force hits the field, drawing Peter 4 more cards. Peter then announces he's going to pass through his phases, 
and at one point before the end of turn, Adam casts a fused wear and tear, blowing up groin rights and solemn simulacrum. Scott gets to draw a card as the solemn is destroyed, and Adam gains a treasure. I draw a card, and Adam gains a treasure. I'm not going to say this anymore because I feel like it's half the video already, so I play a tap in Flamekin Village, and then pay 4 in my main phase to cast a Perforos. A Goblin Churigen hits the field, and my opponents feel my pain as they each take 2. Adam plays a Dragon Skull Summit, and we realize just how huge a Kiri is with all those treasure tokens. He moves the Greaves onto Timna, and then puts the two Battle Axes onto Akiri. We then see the Mirage Mirror become a copy of Thassa, and we all realize where this is going. Adam uses two treasure tokens to make Akiri unblockable, and counts up how big Akiri is. Akiri then heads her final time towards Scott, and connecting, takes him out. Adam then pays one life to Timna's ability, and draws a card. He then moves the Greaves back onto Akiri in his post-combat main phase, and pays 10, putting 5 into each X for Walking Ballista, who comes in with 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. He then passes to Peter. Peter plays a Forest for his turn, and he casts an Oracle of Moldaya. He reveals the Forest off the top, and plays it. Eldritch's Evolution then hits the stack, with Peter sacrificing the Force, and he goes to his library to find a creature that meets the Evolution's criteria. Peter grabs a Crater Hoof Behemoth, and the ability goes on the stack as the Behemoth hits the field. I pass priority, but Adam does respond to the ability, using the Ballista's plus one plus one counters to kill the Woodland Bellower. This is five triggers, which means that Peter gets to draw five cards from his Rumic Armasaur, and Adam sadly misses his treasure triggers for the first time in this game. He does remember to get more Battle Axe triggers though from the turn before, and he puts them to the field. Peter's board then gets pumped by plus four plus four, and he swings his board at me to take me out. Moving to his end step, Peter then discards down to seven. Adam plays a Swamp for turn, and he has the Mirage Mirror become a copy of Yissin. He activates the copy to find to put Mother of Ruins onto the battlefield from his library. He moves the Greaves to Mom, and taps her to give a Kiri protection from green. Adam then pays to equip the two new battle axes onto Akiri, and he swings his commander at Peter for 11 commander damage. Moving to his post combat main phase, Adam loses another 1 life to Timna to draw a card. He then discards down to 7 and passes to Peter. Peter doesn't pay the 2 for the tithe, and Adam gains his treasure token. He does play a Wirewood Lodge, and then a forest off the top of his library for his lands returns, and reveals a Wirewood Symbiote off the top. Peter then pays to cast a Noxious Revival, and he puts Lignify on top of his library. He then casts a Guardian Project, and puts a Song of the Dryad onto Akiri. Moving to combat, Peter swings everything at Adam, who blocks with Timna on the Oracle. Adam then uses Mortify to take out Crater of Behemoth, and combat damage is dealt, and takes 4 damage from Peter's creatures, only dropping his life total by 2 total after gaining the life. Peter then passes. Adam plays a Plains and brings out an Aethersworn Cannonist. He puts the Greaves onto the Artifact creature, and moves the Battle Axes onto Mom. Adam then swings her at Peter, who pays 1 green to cast Vitalize. He untaps his creatures, and blocks to the Armasaur, stopping Mother of Runes. Peter draws, and Adam gains his treasure. He casts a Vizier of the Menagerie, and draws as it enters from Guardian Project. He then casts a Wirewood Symbiote, and before you can all start commenting about the Canonist, we do figure it out, trust me. He draws as it enters, and then casts a Karametris Oculate, drawing once more. Adam gains a treasure for each of the draws, and they then catch the Canonist mistake, and Peter rectifies it by using Lignify on the Canonist. With the table of green, he would have done that first if he'd realized it at the time. Peter then passes. Adam draws and casts Sun Titan. He brings back Mother of Ruins from the graveyard and puts the Greaves onto her. He taps Mother of Ruins to give Sun Titan protection from green, and moves the Battle Axes to the Titan, and then gives the Titan some speedy shoes, swinging it at Peter and taking him out. Game review time! So this is probably one of the few games where my Cranko deck really didn't do very much. I probably could have sequenced things slightly better by casting Perforos earlier on, but there was never really an opportunity, and people just seemed to like to beat on me. It was nice to see Adam's Akiri and Timna deck firing on all cylinders, 
Smothering Tithe is a huge enabler for the deck, and frankly is just an incredible card. I also think that Scott piloted the Yuriko deck very well. I think the standout moment for me was when Peter was using his Makokoro to deny Scott the trigger when we knew that Temporal Trespass was on top. I think Peter played a really tight game, and taking me out was probably the right move, even if it meant that it was harder for him to kill Adam afterwards. He really wasn't able to swing into Adam at that point in a very good situation, and the fact that I had Perforos out on the field and could deal damage to him without attacking was probably enough to make me too much of a threat. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.